Good. So uh, we got Jamie, and we say the last name Conlon. Is that right? Yep, that's yep. it. Um, from F and G Life. So uh, we're honored to have him. I met. Uh, well, we've we yeah we met in person down uh, in Atlanta here a few months ago, and uh, was extremely impressed um, with Jamie. So usually I go through this process where, you know, I'm grilling sales vice presidents that as some of you might know, and there might be a little bit of hazing process involved or all that. And I decided to just, uh, put all that aside. As soon as, as soon as Jamie started talking, I was like, Holy crap, this guy, uh, he he's got experience. He knows what he's doing. Um, so one thing, the first, and most important thing when it comes to this business is I think, Jamie, you, you actually had some personal sales uh, where you got into the business. You want to share your background and, and uh, take, <clears throat> take it from here? Yeah, I, no, I don't want to botch it. I just was really impressed with Jamie and the fact, and, and he'll get into it and, and sh it'll make sense here in a second, uh, but he's right on point, not just with F and G, but really knowing why and how F and G and where they fit into the marketplace as a whole in the brokerage space. And um, so explain, tell them your background. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Carter. And uh, yeah, my name is Jamie Collin. I am uh, one of our national account managers here at Fidelity and Guarantee. And so I here I am tasked to work with all of our AIN member firms, such as Pacific Insurance Group, on a national scope. So not just regionally, it's a national uh, footprint. But um, I went to uh, Texas Tech University. I got my degree in personal financial planning, always with the intent of getting into the life insurance business. Uh, my mom's been in it for a long time. So I was really born into it. So, you know, uh, but out of college, uh, I started with a BGA here in Dallas. I uh, worked as an internal wholesaler for six and a half years and realized this is where I've really learned the business, right? All the way from just learning basic quotes and illustrations to, you know, product and more in depth on the product side, but also LNC, new business, underwriting and so forth. And uh, from there, I, I went to another BGA as an external wholesaler for the DFW uh, Metroplex here in Dallas. Uh, did that for a year and then had the opportunity to go to AIG as a regional, um, was there for four and a half years, and then um, went to Capitus, another BGA as an SVP for about 18 months, 15 to 18 months, and then had the opportunity to come here to FNG. So I do have a lot of that BGA background. I know it. Uh, I have done personal production as well. So I, I know it goes into the the day to day as an agent or agency. Uh, and, you know, the way I look at it is I'm your true partner. I'm here to fight for you guys and, uh, and gals. And, uh, you know, I don't typically just speak the carrier line, right? I, I know what you go through on a day to day. In, what, in the sense that I got too from FNG is that you have more of that freedom in your position. There's a certain level of respect. I could sense that they give you a certain amount of freedom and rope uh, for you to do your thing because of your experience. And you live in Dallas, you're married and you have an, is it eight-year-old, nine-year-old son? So, yep, I'm in Dallas uh, and married. I uh, was married in 2016. Uh, my wife, I have a stepdaughter who's 20. Step She'll be 21 in February and graduating from Sam Houston in May. Uh, and then we do have a four-year-old boy. So he's, uh, he keeps us on our toes for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, so, and I've shared so with my time with Jamie, he kind of understands our model, uh, in what we've done in the past with uh, Patrick Kelly's tax for retirement, retirement miracle, that the concepts and, and really that's why we had opened this up, um, to F and G and Chris Kersling <clears throat> came across a case, uh, here when we first started doing the long-term care exemptions, where he met with somebody who was instantly approved at preferred non-tobacco with F and G and Chris Kersling came into my office and said, well, help me beat this. And I said, well, probably not going to be able to. 
And he said, what, what do you mean? I said, because F and G is really good right now. In fact, everything's in line for us to get going with them after the long-term care exemption. And Chris was like, well, well, that's not what I wanted to hear. And, and uh, so uh, it, it's all good. And, and uh, he got the gentleman for the long-term care piece of it. Um, but really now it's time to move into that next wave. And when we get into, and, and we've gone through some of the illustrations, but you'll go in more in depth. And I would encourage you to get more in depth with it. Once you're appointed with F and G or submit your contract and paperwork, we have the ability and, and Jamie has an override button on WinFlex web, start running the illustrations. But what you're going to see is F and G when it comes to income uh, and you show that distribution, F and G is really good right now for that supplemental tax-free retirement income stream. So I'm going to turn it over to Jamie here. And yep. uh, Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, so just a couple points before I share my screen. So we look at ourselves as a pre-appointment carrier. Uh, we do require agents to be appointed with us prior to soliciting that business. Uh, what I will say is our turnaround's 24 to 48 hours to get an agent code. But, you know, Greg, if you said, hey, I've got this client, I'm meeting with them tomorrow. Um, hey, I, and I plan on taking an e-application. Is there any way you can help get my contract pushed through? I can typically get it done same day. And um, Lauren knows that we've been working on some of them as long as along with Becky as well. So we do have the ability to get that stuff turned around in a matter of hours. Um, but again, we are pre-appointment. Not It doesn't matter what state uh, you're wanting to do that business in. Um, so let me share my screen with you all real quick. Uh, <clears throat> all right, yep. can you see that? Can you see the full slides? Yep. Perfect. Okay, again, my name is Jamie Conlin. I am uh, one of the national account managers here at FNG. So with our time today, I just want to touch on who we are here at FNG, why you would want to potentially consider us and our, our IUL products. Uh, we'll take a deeper dive into our flagship IUL, which is called Path Setter. And then we'll look at, um, you know, just partnering us with here at FNG and what we make available to you. So who is FNG? Uh, we've been around for just over 60 years. Uh, if we fast forward, and this is what we kind of run into the most, is in early 2000s, we were under the brand name of Old Mutual. Uh, at that time, we were one of the largest, if not the largest, term insurers in the industry. Um, during that time, our headquarters was in Baltimore, uh, but we have been moving our headquarters here or to Des Moines, Iowa, which started in 2014. And then we also have a partnership with Blackstone. You've probably heard them in the news. They've acquired a part of AIG's life and retirement business. Uh, but Blackstone, in partnership with our chief investment office, uh, manages our general account, which I'll touch on more. And then also in June of 2020, FNF or Fidelity National Financial acquired us. They are the largest title uh, company in the United States. So if we look at our corporate structure, FNF or Fidelity National, Fidelity National Financial is our parent company. Uh, so again, they're the largest title uh, company. So when you go to close on a refinance or a loan for your mortgage, that line item for $500 is you know, what they do. And so what's great about this partnership is in times of low interest rate environments like we've been experiencing for more years than we've wanted to, they have an influx of business, right? Uh, but as those interest rates increase, they begin to tighten up. And this is where we help offset their tightening of business um, as a life and annuity company. So we are very independent and operate independently of FNF. Uh, example of that is I still have FNG benefits and I will have FNG benefits next year. Again, our headquarters is in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, nice thing about moving our headquarters from Baltimore to Des Moines is that uh, there's a lot of talent in that area due to other carriers being located there um, and with the growth that Des Moines is experiencing. And then we're headed up by Chris Blunt. He's our president and CEO here at FNG. 
So again, we've partnered with Blackstone um, Insurance Solutions. They manage our general account here at FNG. What this gives us is they have the ability to, what they have the they have uh, the options of, I guess, investing in high quality, high yielding debt that we may not have available to us on a daily or monthly time frame, right? So they have these uh, uh, blocks of investment opportunities. They say, "Hey, do you want to take uh, you know advantage of that?" And so, say we require a five percent return, but we get five and a half. That half a percent, we push 100% to the policyholder in the way of higher cap rates that you'll see on another slide and participation rates. So with that relationship, uh, we've been able to achieve higher returns and pass those on to our policyholders. And so for you, I mean, this, this gives you, you know, notice that we will have, you know, a more dependable product for our distribution partners uh, you know, and it, uh, that you can rely on for you and your clients. So why FNG or who we are also? So when FNF or Fidelity National Financial acquired us in June of 2020, we received three ratings increases that same week. So across the board, we're an A minus um, with a stable outlook. We do have uh, an office that all they do is work with the rating agencies to improve upon these ratings. Last I heard is we, we are expecting a bump to A, uh, but we all know how slow our industry moves. So uh, hopefully maybe next year we can experience that upgrade, um, but we, we are always working with these rate, rating agencies to improve upon our, our ratings. Um, and just to give you a little idea of our growth, in 2019, uh, we paid for 38 million of IUL business. And keep in mind, we are an IUL only carrier. In 2020, we hit 50 million for the year. And then as of the close of last week, we've already exceeded or we're just under 71 million of paid business. So to kind of put that into perspective, yeah, so very, very good growth. We're looking at about 35 to 40% per year. Uh, at the beginning of 2020, we had 300 employees. At halfway point of this year, we had 600. So we doubled our headcount. And this is, keep in mind, in the midst of COVID hitting in March of 2020. So we've done this. We've been able to onboard even on a remote basis. Uh, currently, most, if not almost all employees are remote currently. Uh, we're hoping to open up the office again in January of 2022. And if y'all have questions, please feel free to uh, you know jump in at any time. So, so FG's rating used to not even be A minus. I think it it got bumped up to an A minus several years ago. I don't know how long it's been. So 2020, uh, yeah, June of 2020. Uh, after that acquisition by FNF, when they acquired us, we received that A minus rating um, a week later. That's great. So, did oh, somebody have a question? Yes. Does that mean you went <clears throat> more conservative on the yield of the bonds and so forth, therefore reducing the return to the client? If you, because uh, some, you know, you can be A plus plus, but that means you don't try to make it a lot of money either. Probably had more to do with the backing and the structure and the amount of total assets that Fidelity brought to the table. So the rating agencies, I, I, they're okay. They're looking more, they're not necessarily looking in my opinion at the right thing for the underlying policy holder always. And anything, I just like anything that's A, whether that's A minus, A plus, A, we're golden. Because then you're like, it's A rated. And the difference between A plus and A minus, who really cares? That's how yeah, I think about it. I, yeah, the way I've always looked at it is like, when you're you're picking your doctor, are you picking them because they got 100% in school or 90? Does it really matter? And so, uh, you know, it's still an A is an A. Uh, but yes, I think to your point, Carter, is, with that partnership and with that structure with Fidelity National Financial and the backing that they do bring to us, uh, that was the probably main catalyst as to why we received those upgrades. You know, 
with this low interest rate environment, F and F has an influx of business, so they have a ton of capital that they can put towards F and G while we're in this growth um, growth stage as well. And so, again, it's been a great partnership, uh, but that is probably a big reason for the ratings increase as well. What do you attribute the explosive? I mean, doubling in size. I mean, that's insane. How, what what magic wand yeah. did you guys wave to make that all happen? Yeah, I, I wish I knew uh, ever all the moving parts, but, you know, typically, like, like my days at AIG, when we had a year where we grew at, I think it was like 30%, and we hired a ton of people, but the next year when we had a bad year, what happened to all those people? We let them all go, uh, or the majority of them, and so I think here, what I know we do is we try to take a very strategic approach even though we know we're growing very rapidly, we don't want to just to hire to hire, right? We want to make sure that there's a strategic approach behind what we do and why we do it. Because say, we know this growth rate is not sustainable for the next 10, 15, 20 years, but we also don't want to be in a position where we have to just let a ton of headcount go because we didn't hire appropriately. Um, As for why, I think we're just being, you know, we're a pretty boutique carrier. I think mo- we're getting more and more eyes on us. And, you know, the, the index industry for life business has been growing pretty rapidly, especially with the tightening of the UL type products, whether it's guaranteed or non guaranteed. Uh, and with us being, you know, the way that we have a low charge structure within our product. And we illustrate on accumulation designs, you know, top of the list. And so I think with that, um, we also have a biggest portion of our life business is more of that kind of like career type agent. So when they start doing business with us, they pretty much send the majority of their business to us. So a lot of it's probably attributable to them as well. Also, they're very big on the annuity side of things. They, They do a lot of fixed index annuities, which gives them the power on the pricing to be able to come out with product. And because they are only doing IULs, they're um, kind of cloning Allianz in a way, I feel like from just being profitable, strategic in the product, right? So the, the real answer to your question, Greg, is because they have the best product. If you're in the brokerage space, you're gonna all you're gonna see a big increase in production, and I think Jamie yeah. saw that with several companies. I know I've seen it with LSW when they came out, and boom, and even North American when when they have that competitive product and they're winning the illustration game, you'll see a big uptick in production. And so that, I think it's okay to tell the truth and just say because they have the best product they're getting a lot more business. They feel it's sustainable business, that it's not going anywhere. And my counterparts um, from the other IMOs that I'm friends with in the country are all like very positive on their experience, the product and how they feel about F&G. So it absolutely makes sense to bring them into the mix. I have a a, a few uh, annuities out with F&G, not not uh, they're they're fixed anyway. I just wanted to put a plug in that they are the nicest people in the world to do business with. They're so easy, so nice. I really, uh, so far, my experiences have been very positive. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's great to hear. So, um, and I will touch on some competitive stuff as well uh, that. I, we have ran with life trends. Um, and so we'll get a little more into that on the products portion. But just so you know, a few of our niches, one of them is our exam free underwriting. So this isn't agile underwriting or, you know, accelerated underwriting with the chance of no exam. This is truly exam free. So if your client is age 50 or under and they're applying for 1 million of coverage or less, it will be exam free every single time. We will not ask for an exam. We won't ask for fluids to be done. This will be truly exam free. And of 90% of those exam free applications that come in 
are approved at standard or better. So keep in mind, our top right class is preferred. We don't have a preferred plus, but this is partially why we have such a competitive product along with being able to support our exam free process. And then 70% of those exam free applications are approved within seven calendar days. So that's very, very quick. A few weeks ago, I had a case come in on Thursday. The agent was paid the next Thursday. That's how fast it was. Um, so I know it's not going to be like that for every case, but it is, it is very, very fast. Uh, on Monday of next week, this is being extended through age 60 and a million. So this 50 will now be age 60 and under for a million of coverage or less. Wow. So what we do is we order the MIB, the MVR, RX, and a soft credit check. We can make a decision. Uh, again, 70% of those are made decision made within seven days. Uh, we will make a decision. If we can't, the next thing we do, we'll order a phone interview. Phone interview is usually 10 to 20 minutes. About 90% of the time, it's going to go to issue from there. If we still have questions, the last thing we're going to do is order an APS. I'll tell you, for fully underwritten and exam-free, we are ordering less than 10% of our cases medical records. So we are trying to get away from the old style of, you know, fully underwritten. We try not to order medical records unless we have to. Do you underwrite folks in the military services differently? Uh, I can send our, our field underwriting guide, which does touch on military. But I think if, as long as they're not in, um, you know, any of the danger zones like Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, they, that we still underwrite active military uh, as long as they're not in certain parts of the country. Okay. So, so you couple this with the number one illustrating uh, product in the industry and you truly have an easy, efficient, uh, hassle-free process. Uh, what I will say is even for your clients who are currently above age 50 or applying for more than a million, our average turnaround time currently on fully underwritten is 20 calendar days. I don't know a lot of carriers that can say that they underwrite that quickly, but as long as the items are coming in uh, or it's in good order, I mean, our, our turnaround for exam free and fully underwritten is very, very quick. All right, so uh, let's take a let's take a look at FNG, our pass setter. This is our accumulation index product. Um, so, why do you want to consider FNG and our uh, fixed index universal life? First and foremost, you know, strong product performance, which has been driven by a reliable cap rate history. If you look back from 2012 to today, our cap rate has only changed 10 times. So, four of those have been for the betterment. But our cap rate has ranged from where it is today at 13% through 15 and a half over that 10 year period. So keep in mind, a lot of that is attributable to the Blackstone difference and what they bring to us and your policyholders. Our variable loan rate is contractually guaranteed not to exceed 5%. So most carriers, their variable loans are between four and eight, currently charging five. Ours will never exceed 5% and we're currently charging 2.9%. We also have our Barclays uh, strategy. This is uh, the Trailblazer sectors five. There's Can no- Can we just make sure for that point there because it's a very important one. Jamie does, I mean, we're gonna throw this out there. Um, Greg, why, why would the loan rate being capped at 5% be important? for somebody who's purchasing a policy for supplemental retirement income? Well, once they start taking it as income, you know, you could have low return rates and still outpace the, uh, the, the repayment rate of 5%. So, so you're, you're, you know, even in modest gain years in the indexes, you can still continue to outpace uh, the loan rate. Well, that is, that's very true. And one other thing I would point to is we all expect our interest rate environment to increase at some point. Well, when 
interest rates increase, what happens? Loan rates, they, they follow. And so the great thing is as those loan rates do increase, we can't go above that 5% where some carriers can go as high as 8%. And then, you know, to your point, Greg, if it is an 8% loan versus a five, I only need 5% return to offset the five. I don't need 8% to offset an 8% charge, which um, is very, very high. So let me say this a different way. Right now, loan rates are cheap. It's 2.9% if you do a variable loan, take a fair policy loan. No one's doing that right now because they haven't had enough time to, to build up cash value and, and do that. But that's fast forward 15, 20 years down the road. What's the likelihood that interest rates are still at 2.9% variable loan rate? in 15, 20, 30 years from now when somebody, very low. <clears throat> What's the likelihood of interest rates being possibly eight, nine, 10? What, what happens if we move back into the 80s type deal with interest rates and interest rates spike up to 17%? With other IUL policies, they're gonna follow that and they're not capped on the variable loan rate. Whereas North American, Allianz, F and G, they're capped on the variable loan rate. So it's one of the biggest, like probably really, really important features that not too many people pay attention to when buying policies. If they're really planning on taking a tax, supplemental tax-free income stream from the policy, it's the one thing, in my opinion, that could just destroy the policy because if they have an outstanding, they've taken loans out and they have a million dollars of outstanding loans and that variable loan rate is, goes up to 15%, it's going to be 15% on that whole million dollars. There's no way the policy is going to keep up with the caps and perform. So having a variable loan rate that's capped, if you're really planning on taking uh, tax-free retirement income distributions, is really important. And it's a huge selling feature for F and G. That, and he, he'll get to it with the critical illness, are the two things that I love. Yeah, and I do. I think it's a very important backstop for your policyholder, especially when building out this product. It is meant to be an accumulation product. So most people will be supplementing their retirement income at some point. And to have the ability to take a variable loan rate at no more than 5% is very, very strong. So if, uh, if, if you were to look at the 80s, it, it, this would be similar like in the 60s if interest rates were low, uh, taking something out. And, and then you move into the 80s when everyone's seeing the 17% interest, yours being capped at 5% would put you in a very advantageous spot, much more sure. so than being a lot higher. Yep, absolutely. And so, um, but yep, so it is one of the, you know, best items I think in our product and what and with it being contractually guaranteed that will never change right and so um, so moving on a little we do have our proprietary index Barclays Trailblazers sectors five this strategy has no cap um, there's also no spread or charge for this strategy uh, the participation rate is 145 percent with a one percent no charge bonus that begins in the second policy year and I'll touch on that a little more as well we also have a full suite of accelerated death benefit riders, which include critical chronic and terminal illness, along with exam-free underwriting that we touched on the last slide. So pass setter. Pass setter can be issued through the age of 80, minimum death benefit of 50,000. So again, our variable loans are contractually guaranteed not to exceed 5%, but clients can also within our product take withdrawals up to 20% surrender charge free. So while they're in that surrender period, any withdrawals they take, 20% of that will be surrender charge free. So most carriers are gonna charge you 100% on anything within that surrender window. Uh, we will not. Now we do have two account value enhancements or persistency bonuses. That's probably- So can we just make sure I understand that there? Cause I think this is a pretty big point. Yeah. So as the, if you look at this, the surrender charge period, 
is uh is it 10 years it's uh 15 years so 15 years surrender charge period but what he's saying it, they can do a 10 per up to 20 percent from the account value not the surrender value they could do 20 percent yeah. and not get ding the surrender charge yeah so if i took fifty thousand dollars out and say year 10 ten thousand of that would be surrender charge free well, it says here surrender charge, and you're saying uh, account value, right? right. So, <laughs> so in, in the in the past, people look and and I've gone through this many times because I've been selling these now for like 20 years. People will get their statements, and it'll show the account value, and then it'll show the surrender value. And generally speaking, this is the first I've ever heard of this. Uh, like right now is the first that I've ever heard of this is that uh, in, in the past, they might have 100,000 in their account value. They might only have 40,000 in their surrender value. You with me? Yeah, so why don't we change that to account value, 20% of account value, if that's the way it is. Withdrawals up to 20% surrender charge free is what it's so, saying. So the withdrawals are gonna come out based on the account value, right? But 20% okay. of that, 20% of the withdrawal will not be subject to the surrender charge penalty and per se, or the charge, right? The other 80% okay. would be subject to whatever the charge is. So it's an action word, not a verb. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so what they're trying to do is, it sounds like to me, is when people get into these and they might have some something comes up and they need a little bit of money from the policy for some reason, they're trying to make it more client friendly at the end of the day, which is, which is wonderful. It is. It's more client friendly. And we know we have a longer surrender charge than a lot of other carriers. A lot of them are at 10. I know there's a bunch at 15 as well, but we're just trying not to penalize the client for needing to access. And what is reality is their money. Right. And so Anything we can do to help give back in any way that we can is like in way of that 20% surrender charge free penalty we kind of, or we don't uh, charge, we're going to do, right? And so same with the higher caps or the higher participation rights, anything we can pass on to the policyholder, we try to do. Uh, Jamie, if, if someone does like a five pay or a seven pay, does that still stretch the surrender period out 15 years, even though the, the policy is fully paid up? So the surrender is a 15 year surrender. Doesn't matter if it was a single or a hundred year pay. Yep. Okay. But if you five pay it, the, the, it'll shrink. So it's, it's not the same. If you're minimum funding it, you're going to have a wider gap for the difference between your surrender value and your account value. If you maximum fund it from the get-go, you're gonna shrink that down. So it's gonna be a lot smaller. Okay. Jamie, so, you, mentioned, uh -huh. you mentioned on the previous slide about the uh, accelerated benefits, but you didn't mention if, is that a rider? Is that cost extra or is that? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna cover that here in a couple of slides. So okay. I'll, I promise I will uh, give you a lot more detail on our on our accelerated uh, death benefit riders, but they are auto included and they are free of charge on the front end. Okay, thank you. So persistency bonus or account enhancement, we have a 1% no charge bonus. This is on two of our strategies. One's our uh, SMP high bonus strategy and the other is the Barclays strategy. Again, this 1% bonus starts in the second policy year. So let's say you're in the Barclays strategy, we're in the second year, and the return is negative five for the year. Well, we also have a floor of 25 basis points. So the client can expect a 25 basis point credit on a down year or a year where the crediting is less than 25 basis points. But they would also get the 1% bonus on top of that. So they would get 1.25% in a down year for being in the Barclays strategy. Now we also have a persistency bonus of 25 basis points on across all five strategies that we offer that starts in the 11th policy year. So on that other example, say you're in the 11th year and it's a down year, you get your floor of 25 basis points, you get that 1% bonus if you're in the Barclays or the high bonus S&P, 
But then you also get the additional 25 basis point persistency that starts in that 11th year. So you can expect 1.5% credit even on a down year. It's very, very strong. Most carriers don't even have a floor of uh, 25 basis points. Most of them are at zero. And then also our charges and expenses are listed here. I'm not gonna go through them, but what I will say is we're on the moderate to low end in comparison to other carriers as well. And then we do have a 15 year no lapse guarantee that's built in as long as the minimum premiums paid. Uh, what I will say is based on funding, it can carry out as long as I've seen like age 84. All right, so our crediting options. There's five of them listed here. I'm only gonna cover two of them. The top one is our, um, our standard S&P 500. It's an annual point to point with the high cap of 13%. And then the one, the second one in green, this is the Barclays Trailblazer Sectors 5. Again, 145% participation rate. There is no cap on this index strategy or charge. And it has the 1% accounts currently paying 4.75. So that's probably a little higher than you're used to seeing with others as well. So just a little more around Barclays, it's a volatility control index. They try to keep volatility or they want volatility around about 5%. As volatility increases, they can move out of an equity position, have more heavily into treasuries and cash. But as that volatility decreases, they will go back into an equity position and move out of the cash and treasury instruments. So <clears throat> if Santa Claus was paying $100,000 a year premium for five years for you this Christmas, how would yep. you allocate it? So uh, for me currently, I would, for year one, use the S&P. So this last year, year and a half, maybe two years, we've experienced high volatility in the markets, right? So the Barclays is because the volatility with the, the clip at 5% is so low, you're not gonna experience the highest of highs with this index strategy, but you're not gonna experience the lowest of lows. So even on a down year for the S&P, the Barclays strategy could be positive. So, I think with high volatility or a more conservative client than bar or with that if lower volatility and or a more conservative client, the Barclays is a great strategy. If I was putting my money in today, I would pick the S&P with the high cap. And, and remember the first year doesn't matter because you're not getting the 1% bonus. So the, to have a 13% bonus, cap on the S&P 500 is unheard of in the industry right now. Currently, yep. And again, with our relationship with uh, Blackstone, how we have been able to support such a high cap, even that 145% participation rate is high, right? And so because of that Blackstone difference, we've been able to support a cap of 13%. And again, that's been as high as 15 and a half over a 10 year period. So it's never been below where it is today with us. And truthfully, the reason why F and G is able to illustrate the highest income on illustrations right now has to do with the fact that they have a 13% cap on the S&P. Yeah. So and and truthfully, yeah, that's true. But even if you illustrate Barclays, so we get these calls a lot. They're like, hey, I illustrated Barclays at the 716 against the S&P at 745, but the Barclays illustration is outperforming. Why is that? Remember that 1% bonus is additive. So it's really 8.16 if you're doing max rates, because uh, in your tabular detail, it does take into account the bonus structure. If you're ever looking at historicals though, so. In every IUL illustration, there's the 20 year look back. Those do not include or are not additive of any type of bonus arrangement. When we do an illustration, is that 1% automatically included in there or, or will it be the 7.16? Nope, it will be. So when you're looking at the tabular page, the tabular detail, it will be automatically included. Okay. So let's look at, so this is, I know there's a lot of numbers here, but this is a life trends report. 
this says, I think the client is, they're paying in 10,000 or now they're paying in premiums for 20 years or whatever, and then taking distributions for 20 years. Anywhere in green, we're number one. And this is a percentage difference to the next best carrier. And I think North American's probably the next best with that fidelity uh, index account. So you can pretty much see almost across the board, we're gonna illustrate the best when using the Barclay strategy. So if we take a quick look at an example, here we have a female who's 45 years old. She's standard on tobacco and she's putting in $20,000 a year for 10 years. She's gonna take variable loans for 25 years starting at age 65. Uh, we're gonna utilize the Barclay strategy. This is gonna be an option two to option A, death benefit. Um, so once the premium cease, then we'll switch to level. Minimum non-MEC death benefit. And the great thing for this case is she's eligible for exam free uh, based on her age and the death benefit. So death benefits just over 400,000. The accumulation value at age 65 is $530,000. Now that variable loan beginning at age 65 is $62,000 a year for 25 years. And then the target premium is 6,000. So if we look at a snapshot from age 100, she's paid in $200,000 over a 10 year period. She's able to uh, get a projected income of just over 1.55 million. So almost eight to one on the money paid in and still have a net death benefit of $878,000. So these do uh, are inclusive of the 7702 rates. Uh, we do allow, if you're in sales link, which is our agent agency portal, you can run illustrations within sales link. You do have the option of turning on or off the 7702 rates. And WinFlex, it's always going to be 7702. But within sales link, we do allow the flexibility of turning that on and off. So where does that kind of fit in? You have a younger client today, their need is probably more death benefit driven versus true cash accumulation, uh, like maybe a 50, 55. So if you turn off 7702, a little higher death benefit today, they'll give up a little accumulation or cash or accumulation or distribution on the back end, but it's not so heavy that it's uh, a make or break it, in my opinion. And then you also get paid more, not with the non-7702 rates. More death benefit generally means higher target, which equates to more commissions. That's exactly the new 7702 rules allows for less death benefit. So Congress passed it and basically allowed people to put more into the policies, uh, which is a good thing for the consumer. So yep. are you saying that this would have covered our long term care opt out folks in the state of Washington? No, because it's a chronic illness rider. It's not a true gotcha. long term care. Gotcha. So, all right, living benefits. So we have, again, critical, terminal, and chronic. These are auto-included for all cases table four or better. So as long as you're at table four or better, these are included. If you're approved at table five or worse, then unfortunately the living benefits aren't available. I can tell you anything table five and we go through table eight, uh, it's probably not even 1% of our business. So uh, almost every case will have these riders. So critical illness, uh, this is payable up to a max of a million or their death benefit, whichever is the lesser of the two. And this for any client who say has a critical condition like a heart attack, maybe a stroke. What I see the most are invasive cancers. Uh, this is where this rider would be utilized. Uh, terminal illness, this would be, it's the same payout up to a million, uh, max of a million or your death benefit. Uh, this is for any client who has been deemed to have a terminal illness and a life expectancy of 24 months to live or less. Now, if you do any uh, business in the state of Florida, uh, that life expectancy is only 12 months. And then finally, our chronic illness. Uh, so if your client can't do two of six activities a day of living, or they have a severe cognitive impairment like Alzheimer's, we will allow them to accelerate up to the max of a million. Uh, but 25% per year or as fast as four years. 
Now they do have to recertify annually for that payment. Uh, but I mean, that's just as simple as going back to the doctor. They confirm, hey, clients still can't do, you know, two of the six activities they are living or they still have Alzheimer's, whatever it may be. Now, does anybody, I'm sure y'all do have clients in California. Chronic illness will be available next Monday for California right. residents. And critical is already there, right? Yep, critical and terminal already there. So, so chronic illness isn't such a big thing for me on this type of a policy because people are going to be overfunding it. And they're going to be uh, basically self-insured when they get their cash value close to the death benefit. The big one for me is critical illness um, and terminal illness, but mostly the critical illness. Because if you have somebody who's younger that finds out that they have invasive cancer after two or three years in the policy, this would pay out uh, up to a million dollars. Does anyone know what North Americans Builder Plus Three pays out on uh, what's the max payout on their IUL for a critical illness? Yeah, I'm not sure on North American. Um, I think it wasn't, still... the, the question wasn't proposed for you. Uh, Is there 20, a 20,000. So oh. it's 50,000 yeah. and then they give net you out 20,000. Right. So it's 40% on 50. Right. And so they also, I think, limit the age to 65, I believe. Uh, all, ours goes through 75 and we don't limit uh, if like if they had a million dollar death benefit and they want to accelerate due to a, say, a vase of cancer or a major stroke. They can do it up to the million. They don't have, they can take the full or percentage. So North American is awesome on term insurance because it goes to a million on term, but they thought they'd make it confusing for everyone. <laughs> 50,000 for permanent IULs. So it's actually not very good. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's better than nothing a little bit, I guess. But F and G's for critical illness is better. Do you see that? But for chronic illness, North American goes up to 2 million. So that's, but again, we don't care so much about chronic illness in a maximum funded. For chronic illness, we would really kind of almost possibly look at something else, right? If that's the main concern. But for cash value accumulation, eye on the ball, what's going to provide them the best retirement income? That's what people are looking for. Then secondly, if I don't get there because of a critical illness or a terminal illness, what does that picture look like? And it's a good policy for that. If the unexpected uh, unfortunately happens, they're going to have access to more cash by accelerating the death benefit through F and G. So there's, there's, it's not just one is better than the other. There's pros and cons. And today is really just getting you to know what the pros are here with Jamie for F and G. Yeah, one thing I'd also like to say on our living benefits is there's no elimination period. So there's a there's no wait time to accelerate for any of these reasons. Um, and also our chronic illness is an indemnity. It's not a reimbursement. Good. So no receipts required, unlike some carriers. I mean, I don't even know how you would save all those receipts, but uh, it is indemnity. So uh, you don't have to worry about saving right. that. Yeah. Uh, so again, exam free. Uh, I know we already covered it, but currently it's through the age of 50 through a million next Monday or on Monday of next week. This is extended through the age of 60. No other changes. Uh, I don't know if you'll do uh, any foreign national business, uh, but if you do foreign nationals, exam free is, or non-US citizens, exam free is still available, but up through a max of $300,000 in coverage. David, are you, is David Wee on here? Yes, I am. Do you have any questions in regards to the foreign national? So what is the nexus comparing to other carriers? Uh, as in like, what do they have to, their ties to the US? Correct. Yeah, so they have to have um, either a home or place of business, brokerage account that pays the premium and so forth. Uh, but I can, when I do my, I'm gonna send a follow-up email 
uh, I can include our underwriting guide, which includes everything for a national. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And then just a couple more slides here. Um, and again, if we have any additional questions, I'm more than happy to answer those as well. But we do have a product site that's available to you um, at any place, anywhere, right? So if you go to success.fglife.com forward slash life dash insurance, and don't feel like you need to write all this down, I will send a copy of this deck. But if you go to this link, um, you can access all of our marketing and promotional materials for PathSetter. One great thing that we do is there's no username or password required to access this site. So what I typically say is, hey, bookmark the product site. Once you've bookmarked it, you hit it on your phone and bam, it's there. You don't have to have a username uh, or password and try to remember that. I know we all have a hundred of those. Uh, and what's great and what I typically do is I will, like if I clicked on the at a glance, it just says here's Path Setter and here's, you know, the breakdown of the product. I can copy that link, put it in an email, send it to a client. They could click on it and look at anything or any links or to another agent. So you can send the links uh, versus having to attach everything. Well, we know Will we as brokers be able to review this presentation as well? Say that one more time, I'm sorry. Will we be able to see this presentation again? Yeah, uh, Beck, hey, Jim, Becky's got it for you. This presentation is oh. being recorded. Great, yeah, I think, thank you. Yeah, she's you're recording on it. it. You're, you're our, and you're our main act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Becky is recording it. And I, again, I'll send a copy of the presentation in case you ever want to go back through the slides as well. Good. So on here, I know it says Everlast. This is another index product that is available. It's not going to be in WinFlex. So only path setters in WinFlex. It will be available through sales link if you want to illustrate it. Uh, here's what I'll tell you on, path, on Everlast. It's 5% of our brokerage business. That's it. 95% of our business that comes in is path setter, uh, so Everlast was designed to be more of a low cost death benefit protection play, but PathSetter beats it on almost all scenarios. Where I see it, Everlast really fit as more your younger clients that are looking to fund over a little longer time horizon. But if you start short paying, it's not gonna be the product. Uh, and then the only difference, it has a rolling target of 24 months where PathSetter has no rolling target. But again, Passetto is designed to be more heavily funded. So typically on most scenarios, you're going to be paying in target premium or higher premium. Right. Yep. And then there's also like how to get started, how to do business with FNG, what the process looks like. Uh, so all of that's made available to you. Also our current life rates, you can click on there and it's going to say, here's what the caps and pars are per index strategy, along with our variable loan rate and what the current rate is. So that's based on the Moody's corporate bond index. Uh, so as that changes, we update it on our right or our uh, life rates section. Jamie, do your, do your um, annuities, index annuities have similar strategies and cap rates as the life, as the IUL? So I, I, I'm, I don't do anything no. annuity. And, and we can, he's the life guy, so we'll talk. I can- Okay, no worries, annuities. no worries. No, that's okay. And then, but strategy wise, I think it's uh, uh, the balanced asset strategies and it's, um, I think the ETS are BlackRock. Uh, so it's a little different, but yeah, the caps, I know Carter and then can go through a little more of that for you. And on fixed index annuities, your cap rates, you're lucky to get something around four and a half, four. Yeah. like four on the S&P 500, where this is 13. What's the difference yeah. between the fully underwritten and the cap of 12 on the low band? So low band is anything under $150,000 face amount. Got it. Basically, if you're applying from 50,000 to 149,999, that's going to be low band. And yes, we have a little less on the caps and participation rates. Uh, I don't know why. I guess to yeah, keep we, this. I mean, we're, it's unrealistic. We're doing one of these for under 150,000. Yeah, I think it's really to keep uh, the competitive edge at 150 and higher, right? Yep. 
So here's a quick um, snapshot of sales link. So the minute you get appointed and your, I'm sorry, the, the next day. So your your code cycles over uh, overnight. This sales link will be made available to you. You'll receive a welcome letter. It will tell you how to log in. Uh, I know I've probably sent it to Lauren and Becky and Carter a few times, so they can probably walk you through it as well. But this is the agent or agency portal that allows you to do everything. You can find marketing materials here. You can run illustrations here. Again, Everlast is available only through sales link. Um, but here's where you can track all your new business. You can run, you can do your e-applications through here. If you want to do paper forms, you can, but I would do the e-application because it's basically the paper app in e-format. Um, and it doesn't let you miss anything. Uh, so it's a great uh, application tool. Uh, again, you can pull your commission reports from here. On the, on the top, there's a communications tab. Uh, here's where you can um uh, say hey i have an office of like four of us i want these certain emails to go to this email address and i want commissions that only come to me so you can point who gets what type of communication um and then and the, when the it comes to the application just remind me uh, you submit an application on here uh electronically and then the client is going to do a phone call correct Nope. So, um, so if they do the e-application and let's just say they qualify for exam free, uh, if we can approve them with the items that we order, which is MIB, MBR, RX, and credit check, uh, then we'll approve it. The next step would be a phone interview if we can't make an offer from those items. And then from the phone interview, then they're going to order doctors their medical records it would be the next usually they just approve them yeah uh, if it's under a million and under age 50 and that's going to 60 it sounds like so um, basically the way you can look at it is 90 percent of cases are going to be approved without medical records 10 percent may have them and then about 70 percent of our cases are approved without a phone interview. wow can me on the e-app that you mentioned, do you, you mentioned gathering the information. Is there a form for that? Uh, no, you would you just submit them. Like we might have our, we might come up with our own form that's just a quick grab the information, but you'll submit it electronically. Well, we already this. have a, we already have a form, but I'm not sure. To you know, the form that we've made is for the other companies. I know. So we haven't made one really for this because we haven't submitted yeah. business yet. So yeah, I know what you mean. So a form may be all encompassing, it may not be. So this is truly our, if you look at our paper application, you look at our e-application, they're identical other than you're just doing it in e-format. So it's gonna have everything like you would if you're filling out the paper app. Um, the great thing is if you have missed, say I forgot to check whether I'm a US citizen, it's gonna put a big red bubble around it so that you can't submit it until you answer the question. But it is literally the, client, the paper app. Does the client then sign that, get it to sign yeah. electronically? So, so let's just say, Jim, you complete the application on the phone with the client. You hit submit. It's going to email it to them. They're going to, I don't know if it's DocuSign or what, they're going to electronically sign it. And then as soon as all the signatures are encapsulated, bam, it's going to our new business team for input. Okay. So it helps, it really helps take a lot of time off of this process and allows for you not to really miss anything. So like, say I was, I answered and I'm not a U.S. citizen, it's going to pull any other forms based on how you respond to those questions. So instead of me having to say, well, what, do I need the foreign travel questionnaire? Do I need a financial supplement? Do I need these other forms? It's going to pull anything based on how the questions are answered within the e-application. So it's very intuitive. And that's so it to the client. It's probably more like the John Hancock process where you're actually filling out a lot of the information. It's not. You are, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're filling out 100%. So you're still going to answer the beneficiary questions, contingent beneficiaries. Do I have other life and annuities? All that's going to get completed. And then also, like, say I answer the plan's going to be $5 million death benefit. 
it'll pull the financial supplement, large case transmittal, all the forms that are required based on that answer. Where some of the companies like Protective will just, you put in very little information and then they're grabbing that on the phone call that they do. Right? And because we're trying not to do the phone call if we don't have to, yeah. this is why it's going to be a, your true paper wrap, but an e-form. Cool. So that. what I'll also say is we currently aren't doing e-delivery, but we do have an e-policy. So when a the client's approved and the case goes to issue, within your new business tab on sales link, when you go into that case, there's going to be like notes section, the plan, there's a few different tabs. On the far end, a new tab will pop up and it'll be the actual full policy packet. So it'll be the whole entire policy and e-form along with delivery requirements. So you can start that process upon issue. When we send out the form or the approved, I'm sorry, the issued policies, they all go out via two-day mail. So every single one of them, whether it's a $500 a month premium or a $5,000 a month premium, they're all mailed via two-day but you do have access through access to the e-copy via sales link. One thing to note is we don't accept DocuSign. We have to have wet signatures currently for delivery documents. What was that? You have term insurance, correct? No. Nope. So oh, okay. we, do one, we do one thing and one thing really well, and that's accumulation IUL. Okay, uh, perfect. Now, one thing that I will say is terms on the docket. Uh, we're looking at probably a potential fourth quarter 2022 rollout of term. So I think it'll really help supplement our business, right? Because as Carter said, you don't want this product for the living benefits. You just don't, right? You want term for that. You want this for truly your accumulation sales. And I think when we roll out the term, we're going to see a lot of two sale cases, right? You may do half a million in term and then 150 to 200 on this and more heavily fund it, but we're going to see a lot of that. That was exactly my thought is that you go out and write someone a million dollars in term and then convert 250 to an IUL. You could do that or just write them both at once and not have to right. worry about the conversion. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so that's what I think we're going to see a lot of that. Uh, but again, I, I, we're anticipating a Q4 term rollout. My guess is if it is in the core fourth quarter, it's gonna be like November to so. So again, just to kind of recap, um, you know, why consider FNG and past setter? Again, the strong product performance uh, also driven by that reliable cap rate history. Again, a lot of that's due to our uh, relationship with Blackstone. That variable loan rate, again, it's contractually guaranteed not to exceed 5%. And we're only charging 2.9 currently. We do have the full suite of accelerated death benefit riders that are included. Um, again, uh, the chronic is available in California starting Monday. And then exam free underwriting currently is through age 50 through a million, and that's being enhanced to age 60. And then you have dedicated partnership, right? You have uh, Carter and his team at Pacific Insurance Group. You have myself as a dedicated resource as well. I work at the agent level as well. So if you ever need me, you know, feel free to email me, call me. Uh, I'm more than happy to assist in any way uh, that I can as well. Do you have an uh, internal sales support that assists you as well? So we do have an internal support team. Emily Scanlon heads up that team. Okay. She has four dedicated internal wholesalers. I don't have my own internal, but Miles Brown, he works with more our brokerage channel. So typically the way I like to work, send everything through me and I'll funnel anything that needs to go where it can, needs to go. But um, if you did say you had a quote request and you just wanted to send it to the sales team or just a quick product question, you can send it to them at life.sales at fglife.com. And I'll include that in my follow-up email as well. Or call them. There's an 800 number. There's an 800 number as well. Yep. So, so if, it's like, if it's something small, <coughs> I would personally call them for, for a basic question. But if it's something that needs a little more thoughtfulness to utilize uh, Jamie's experience and his knowledge and stuff, then he's what he's saying is he's willing to take your calls and help you um, 
on that, which is very generous of him. And one other thing is we do have a, what we call risk assessment line. And so this is like your typical quick quote. We don't have an email for it, but we do have an 800 number. So the 800 number that I'll provide for the sales team, it's the same, but you would hit option two. You'll get somebody, they'll come on the line and you'll say, hey, I want to request a risk assessment. And this is for your cases where you're like, hey, I got a guy or I got a girl. They have a couple underlying conditions. Would we even be able to extend coverage to that client? They will get an underwriter on the phone and you can talk through that case with that underwriter. So we, like I said, we, I think it's better to be able to talk to them because if you can tell them, hey, or they can ask questions, right? You're not just giving them a black box and they have to work from that via an email. You actually get an underwriter. It's very, very quick uh, when you do call in. So that is one other thing we do provide for you as well. And I would highly uh, suggest working with Lauren on bigger cases and picking her brain because she deals with underwriters all the time. So you'll get a lot further probably with better results if you incorporate Lauren. But that's one of the nice things about f g is that you can call in to new business and the underwriting and whatnot. They're a very agent friendly uh, company from that standpoint, which is cool. So it, where the other companies really in the BGA, the broker general agency space, make the everything flow through the BGA or the MGA, where F and G is not that way uh, at this point in time. Uh, yeah, and that, that may change where we get some more dedicated teams and support, but we are super agent friendly. Um, even when you're you send in a poll or a application, all of our communication goes to you as the agent. Uh, along with a copy to uh, Carter or Lauren or whoever's managing that business uh, from their end. But all of that goes to you. And then as that physical policy is mailed out, they send that to you as well. So they don't send it to the agency. Then the agency marks it up and sends it to you. And it just adds more layers and more delays. Everything is direct with you. And so we welcome and encourage those calls in as well. Um, but, you know, as Carter said, you know, utilize them more and myself, uh, Becky and, and so forth. And, you know, we're in this, we're a, we're a team. I mean, we're in this together. So um, whatever I can do from my side, I will do that as well. Jamie, on, on this uh, package you're going to send, uh, it's nice to know if, if you're moving through the questions and you run into something, you say, oops, that's a no-no. I might as well discontinue this conversation. Uh, do you have any, will it show any automatic, like if you run into this, quit asking? <laughs> so no, it's not intuitive to that aspect where I say, hey, I've got type two diabetes, it's uncontrolled. My A1C is like through the roof, it's 13%. It's not gonna say, hey, that's this client's gonna be a decline. Um, I think if you run into those type cases, utilize Lauren or our risk assessment team or both. Um, but yeah, if you were completing an application and you answered something, it's not gonna say stop here because it's not automatic underwriting, right? So we're not providing a, uh, an underwriting decision in say 30 minutes, right? So it won't be able to do that currently. Good. Any other questions? Anyone else? Uh, one more question. Um, does FNG do uh, premium financing? Great question. Uh, no, uh, but that's going to change. So we have currently approved the Kaizen platform. But the problem currently is we don't have a product that is designed for how people are doing financing, right? So a lot of Firms look at products with a high cash value rider or waiver of surrender charges, uh, whatever it may be, right? We don't have that currently available. And so we are, when we roll out finance, we're going to also roll out a product that is specifically driven for premium finance. So we really try to be very thoughtful in how we bring product to market. And I think Premium financing, it's, it's its own animal, right? And so we want to have a true product that is designed and driven for that type of sale. So I anticipate 
early 2023 for it because we haven't even started uh, discussing the product implementation or design yet. So I know it's a year out at a minimum. I have a quick question with, um, if you got a, one of those cases that does end up needing an APS statement, is that something you guys get or are you up to the agents to get that? Yep, so we order APSs. So if a case comes in and we, um, they are- Great required. question. Yeah, so two things, exams. So if they're over age 50 or 60 starting next week or they're applying for more than a million, the agent or agency, however, you know, Carter and your team do it, y'all would order the exam. We, um, we accept exams from exam one and apps or APPS. For APSs though, we order those in-house. So you don't have to worry about it. We'll say, hey, we're requiring, you know, an APS for Dr. John Doe, uh, but our team will order it. And from what I've seen is when we do actually order one, it's the turnarounds are pretty, pretty quick. So the reason why you asked that is because John Hancock and Nationwide in this whole long-term care debacle, they won't go order them. So we've had to have the clients go get them, yep. which, we, which has worked because they want the policy for the exemption so bad. But for the real life marketplace in the real world of getting people signed up, it, they're not going to go. It, it, I mean, some will, right? So, if you've got a good relationship, which I'm sure F and G would accept if the client goes and gets it, and we get it over there. If a client has the APS, uh, you need to come to me because it will be an exception process. Okay. If, it, but when we order them, then it it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so yes, we are not going to go to you and say, hey, I need you to go do the legwork. We will, the only thing you do the legwork on is ordering the exam. We do it from there. We take it, we do everything else. Great. That's awesome. Any other questions before we let? And that way you're not trying to get paid back for these stupid things because they're exactly. so, they cost so much money. It's crazy. Yeah. So you're going to send us a contact information plate, correct? I will send everything for you. Yep, so you'll have all my detailed uh, contact info along with our life sales team. I'll send their email and phone number. So the biggest thing now for everyone, make sure you get your contracting paperwork filled out. Let's get that sent in. Let's get that buttoned up. Then get access to WinFlex Web and do a one-on-one -on -one, um, with Becky. And we'll, we'll continue to do illustrations and run F and G illustrations here on the Monday meetings, but get to a point where you're proficient in running them yourselves and then compare that with what you're currently doing with North American. And if you're looking at an income play, you're gonna see F and G illustrate very well. But what makes me feel good and the reason why I personally, if I was going to buy a million dollar policy right now, I just, I love the 13% cap. They're low fees. And I love the, the Barclays Trailblazer with that pr high participation rate and a 1% bonus on there is, is huge. So this, and that's why the F and G is growing so much right now. Their production, the only reason is because the product, it's not the only reason, but the major reason when you have that competitive of a product, you're going to see that type of growth. And I've seen this many times. Their product is very good. The company's very good. And Jamie, um, we're very fortunate to have his level of acumen around life insurance, IULs of the industry and his willingness to support us. And, and he'll be coming up here um, and doing meetings and stuff as time goes on. Yeah, Jamie, absolutely. Your, this stuff you're going to send out, I, is that the best way to get your phone number or have you already given it? Yep. Now, Carter and his team, they have all my contact details, but when I send the email, I'm going to send it to Carter. Um, Lord and Becky, and then I'll let them distribute it out to all of you because I don't have everybody's contact information. But once you get that, it'll have my signature line in there. If you want to call me, email me, I don't know. Some people may want to text, text me, what I don't care. Just what, however, if you want to, if you have any additional questions or if you just want to run through something more in more detail, more than happy to do that. But yeah, it will have everything. Thank you. 
Yep, Perfect. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank Carter, you so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate your time. I know we ran over, but uh, I appreciate all the questions and I will definitely get this follow-up email to you all uh, here today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.